Welcome to the Sarah Fiend Podcast. This is Fiending for More. We're going to talk all things fashion today with my my own personal fashion little guru here in Kansas City. This is Chelsea. You've met her before. Chelsea, Chelsea does um, all the things that help me look a little bit more polished. Um, I love fashion, but at 43, I finally have started to have fun and not take things so seriously mm-hmm. and give myself a hard time. Like every time I buy shit, I, I'm like, I doubt myself. Talk to me a little bit before you kind of start to throw it back to me Mm -hmm. um, about how you found ease in fashion. Well, fashion is fun. It should be fun. Um, I think people do put uh, too much stress on on what looks good. And and I, I honestly, I used to be like that. But then I started dressing for my body type, which helped me so much. And uh, that's why it, it became so easy because everything I have, when I buy stuff, I like to be able to wear it with more than one thing. So I don't know. I've always been into fashion when I was younger. I think I talked about this on another podcast episode, but I used to lay out all my clothes and pick pick my outfits like my mom kind of rubbed that off on me. So I've, I've always loved it. I love that because again, for me, I didn't grow up um, in a fashion house at all. Mm-hmm. My mom was somebody who is just kind of like this cool at ease hippie like when when I was a child she the most I was influenced fashion wise was she ballet danced Mm -hmm. and um you know and she loved photography so the thing the thing that I was exposed to was beautiful photography and ballet so uh, first movie that ever influenced me fashion wise was flash dance. Mm-hmm. So when I look at even like my first hairstyle was like bangs to here and a perm, just mm-hmm. like Jennifer Beals. Jennifer yep. Beals to me, I could see myself reflected in her because she had kind of tan skin, she had big brown eyes. Um, and then I had that kind of wavy hair. And then I love the, this whole idea of the ripped sweatshirt and the the leggings and all of it. And I, I did ballet. So like for me, there was something to it. Um, and then it's funny because the movie itself had such an effect on me to the point that she lived in an industrial building. And I mean, you know where I live. Mm-hmm. I, and then um, the dog, she had like a pit bull dog. Yeah. It's funny how it imprints on you. But that's my first like real sense of like a fashion film like did you ever have like a fashion film that influenced you um probably clueless yeah I'm telling you when I was five years old I recited that entire movie and now I look back on it and I'm like oh my god I said this like when she's like and the balls fly at my nose <laughs> I love it that's hilarious I had yeah. no idea what I was saying but here yeah. I am five when the balls, balls fly, fly at my nose. <laughs> that's hilarious that is so freaking I'm getting funny. red now yeah. um But I was going to say with flash dance, that style is still applicable today. Like people, I mean, the, the, the off the shoulder sweatshirts with the leggings and things like that, like that still is people still wear that stuff. And what, when you were talking about like ballet and I think that stuff really is, is super classic and influential and, and that is a style and, and wearing like, uh, when I think of a ballerina, I just think of very like classy and elegant and that that's a style too. So I think like your hobbies and stuff can kind of reflect your fashion sense also. Totally. The other thing is so funny because I've been thinking a lot about it because S Factor has mm-hmm. asked me um, to do a little section for, for their women on fire each month. They're kind of revisiting teachers mm-hmm. um, and just to, so viewers and listeners know what I'm talking about. S Factor back in about about 10 years ago was a pole dance studio. Um, you might remember episodes on MTV with like Kim Kardashian. And uh, we, we had a lot of cool, cool people come into the studio. But um, it was kind of before the whole Hustlers thing with Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. And, you know, when I think back to Flashdance, the movie is about a girl who's on the other side of the tracks. Um, she's got streetwear influenced um, and she also knows how to hip hop dance too. Mm-hmm. So she takes her ballet, she takes in like street dancing and um, then she ends up um, auditioning for this incredible you know, school. I think it's in, in New York. I don't even remember if it's in New York or not. Is it Juilliard? I think it might be Juilliard, I think. Um, 
But I just remember uh, everything about it resonated with me. And she has a friend in it who's an ice skater. And they work at um, basically like a bikini bar. So not quite a strip club. Mm -hmm. And then her friend goes down the deep, dark path. And she goes topless at the (laughs) cross the street place. And I remember just being um, just infatuated. It was the first time that I ever really understood the power of clothing, the power of makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, so now, you know, I now I'm 43. I think the first time I saw that movie, my mom covered most of my eye because some of it was pretty scandalous. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so now, um, you know, I, I was showing Aaron the other day. We 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 redid our upstairs, um, like living room area, and we ended up getting these beautiful, beautiful books from Restoration Hardware. And one of the photographers is Peter Lindbergh. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing when you revisit a certain photographer who is in the fashion world and you go back through the years. And for him, he was really, it really started in the 90s. So like Linda Evangelista. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Oh, Christy Turlington, Naomi Campbell. Like these are like the epic. The supermodels. The supermodels, Mm -hmm. Cindy Crawford. And then fast forward to um, the last pictures that Angelina and Brad took together for Vanity Fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just amazing. Iconic. Iconic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've always been influenced by it, but I was always so... I don't know. I always felt like I was f- like, I don't know. F- I don't know if it, faking it is the right word, but I was so scared to imitate mm-hmm. completely. So what changed? You know, I think it was, you know, what it is, is, is like looking at what I was trying to make my own and realizing actually imitation is the best form of flattery. Right. So like try on the exact outfit mm-hmm. and then, take one thing away that doesn't feel like you or like, or add something that feels like you, like, like, you know, a a piece of jewelry from your grandmother or, Mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe, maybe add a splash of color. So I started to understand like, it's okay to look at an outfit and completely mimic it. It's okay. Cause it's, it's cool to give it a try. I do that all the time. And I think like with outfits, they all start with like a base. Okay. So Mm -hmm. like, I mean, you're going to wear either top, bottom, a dress, whatever it is. And if you look at a, a, you know, I always look to like Haley Baldwin style, Kendall Jenner style, like I love theirs. And it's pretty basic how their their outfits are set up. And then they have like these pieces that like just add something to the outfit. So that's what you can, you can kind of take their uh, outline, I guess, or foundation or out, uh, I don't, can't think of the word I'm trying to say, but, and then add to it what feels like you. And that's how you come up with your own style. Yeah. Um, while still like kind of, uh, taking from, from them as well. I mean, they have their own stylists that yeah, create. I think the other thing that's interesting is thinking about giving it, a, a the old college try, right? Like a lot of times we buy something and we don't like it immediately. We're like, oh, it doesn't feel like me. Well, duh, mm-hmm. because you've only worn it once, right? right? Right. So for me, like, I remember with bangs. I don't know how many times I've done fucking bangs. Bangs are hard. They're really hard. And when people tell you you look fucking cute, you immediately go <laughs> to this place of like, well, I don't want to be cute. I want to be beautiful. I want to yeah, be sexy. Exactly. And I look at women with bangs. Like I remember Demi Moore. We were talking about strip yep. tees um, off yes. the podcast. She did have bangs. She looked amazing yes. with it. And I remember being like, my nose is too big. And then there would be times where I would like brush them off to the side. And I'm like, no, commit to it. Exactly. It is a commitment. Bangs are a commitment. I, I've always... I had them for like one day and then I brushed them back, but I was in like high school and I got self-conscious about it. I don't know what about it. It changes the whole look. And I think that's, I think that's why it's so intimidating and why it's like kind of a a shock when you get them. But I love the look of bangs. Like Brigitte Bardot is like the ultimate with her little curtain bangs. Amazing. And you have to, and you do have to just get into a, again, it's like, it's like loosening up into it. Like understanding, like I knew 
that when I first got bangs, I don't I don't have the thickest hair. I've got thin mm-hmm. hair. It's kind of curly. And I was like, you know what? Why is this not working? Because I would look at all the French beauties. Yep. Um, uh, was it Lou? How is it? Do- Dolion? I never say her last name. She's um, a, a Birkin descendant. Uh-huh. Um, and okay. she's just effortlessly, effortless. I can't say effortlessly, effortlessly. cool. <laughs> I can't say her last name and I can't say effortlessly. <laughs> la, la. But like she does this thing with her hair. And then I was like, you know what? Number one, I need more hair. So my ass got more hair. I put it in. And then I was like, all right, now I just got to start to fuck with it and start yeah. to understand like, all right, let's just see what it looks like. So now I'm I'm kind of like, it's the longest I've ever like. I really, really like the way you're doing them now. And I can, I could tell when you got your, your hair, like it just, you felt like better with, with the bangs. Yeah. I do have a question though. So you have a very enviable closet. You yes. have amazing pieces. And I think that people, I mean, at least I want to know, what do you think are some like good investment pieces? Oh God. Definitely. The one thing I learned from my husband Mm -hmm. is he's like, well, you know, you got to fake it till you make it. But if you're going to start out, he said to me, he goes, number one, a good pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. And he's like, number one, you want to be comfortable. You want to feel good and if you're in shoes that are squeezing your feet, you're uncomfortable, you look miserable. Yes. I can't tell you how many nights I'd be like in these plastic shoes, mm-hmm. too high, too low, whatever, and just not feeling good in them. So shoes, I was like, come on. That would be the last thing. It would be the last thing I'd spend my money on. Yeah. Then, um, then he was like, you know, look at coats, look at belts. So for me, I built my wardrobe with shoes, belts, and coats when we first met. And I have to say now that I I can afford more, um, I really love to to have my clothes fit. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I always did was I would buy clothes and I would actually go to the tailor Mm -hmm. and I would get them to fit me. I think that's the key. Yes. A good fit, like good fitted outfit. You can get like an inexpensive outfit, but if it fits well, it looks like a million bucks. Totally. To me, that's where I'm like, I would wrap. And the thing is, there's so many good clothing brands out there Mm -hmm. that, again, if I, there's a few things now that I know, like with t-shirts, for instance, Mm -hmm. sorry, neckline stretch out. Yep. Um, there, there's stuff that just like, I'm sorry, some people, where do you get your t-shirts from? So right now, one of of my favorite places to get t-shirts and that kind of whole, like, oh, like, oh, I just threw this on Joa Brown Mm -hmm. through and through has got this beautiful, like knits and t-shirts that just, they wear well, they're feminine, but they've got that little boxy kind of like urban feel. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to say Meshki and House of CB. Love House of CB. All of those places All of them. And they're they're really, they really do it well for for what I call that like mid, like mid end. They're not quite like NH&M, but not quite you know, a Zara, right. but they definitely, they've, they've got it figured out. I think so too. What do you think? Um, well, I want to know first, what are your three favorite designers or brands? And then I want to know what are your three favorite, like, I don't want to say fast fashion, but like really inexpensive yeah. brands that you like will be your go-tos for maybe trendier pieces. Yeah. I'd have to say, um, I think fast fashion, I'll start out with that first. I I think that um, I have to say it's a roll of the dice sometimes, mm-hmm. but I have to say Fashion Nova, totally. They do it really well. You, I you, mean, c- you have to have an eye yep. to like see what which pieces are going to look expensive and yep. which ones are going to look kind of like tacky but there are some good pieces there are and they're menswear Mm. the other thing I love to do is Zara I love to go to the boys section oh and I like to get I I go I go boys section kids section Mm -hmm. and I'll get for like you know age 12 to 14 Mm -hmm. and they fit amazing really yeah they're amazing so Mm. Zara kids section teen boy do it and you'll love it even their t-shirts and button downs you'll be surprised because a lot of the women's clothes are either built for like 
I remember when I, I didn't have my breasts done, there mm-hmm. was all these like what I call porn boob outfits where I'm like, who who has no shoulders and huge boobs? Right. And then for me, I've got, you know, muscular shoulders. Now that I have a chest, it's still like I've got a small rib cage. So you really have to think about, you know, uh, there's some things you've got to try on. But I'd say Fashion Nova's one. I'd have to say um, Meshki, 100% love them hands down yeah. one of my favorites and then um you know zara for me i i like to go in store same zara's iffy with me for like trying st- i'll order stuff and i'm like it just doesn't fit me yeah but when i go in and i see it up close you can really find so those are probably my three like big picks for like a low end mm-hmm. um for high end um uh, through and through, I think the first the first time I was ever just in awe was Alexander McQueen. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he designed for this, so I think Sarah does a great job mm-hmm. of it now. Um, but Alexander McQueen, uh, it was just like I've never seen things that were like out of a fantasy. Yeah. And then I remember the first scarf I got. Um, was from my friend Jenna Maraska. She won, I think, season two of Survivor. And um, I had two girlfriends, um, my friend Molly, my friend Amanda, and they had gone for a shopping day. And I wanted to be included, but for some reason I couldn't go. And I remember them coming back, and I had not got the skull scarf. And they came back together, and they they were showing the skull scar- skull scarves they had bought, mm-hmm. and I I I'd felt like I don't know. First, I didn't feel included, but, but because yeah. I was like, damn, you guys went together. And second of all, it was just a piece I'd always wanted. Yep. And um, they got it first, and I was always like, damn. And I remember Jenna. I and I didn't have a lot of money at that time, and Jenna sent me um, the scarf, and I still have it. And oh, that's sweet. She said, "For for my queen, who deserves Aww, McQueen." That's really sweet. And I will, I will that ch- scarf. I will cherish, and yeah. it still it has little holes in it now, but I still fucking wear that thing. Um, and I have almost every book that's been published about him. I went to go see um, at the Met mm-hmm. when they showed all of his pieces. Yeah, and um, it's the first time I've ever seen a show. Like, like I'd watch the old videos mm-hmm. that evoked emotion in me. There's one um, where it's with, um, I think it's Shalom Harlow. And she's in this white, like tutu dress that's made out of paper. And there is a machine gun, a paint machine gun. Mm-hmm. And she's on a turntable. And she looks like this broken ballerina. And the paint machine gun just blasts the tutu dress. And you're just like, so it's so beautiful, but it's so brutal because right. she's being blasted with this black paint. And he always had a statement and he was always a little dark, you know, mm-hmm. and he obviously was dark because, you know, we lost him to just a great sadness within himself. But his will always like be imprinted on me. Mm-hmm. I'd say on the joyful side, Gucci, mm-hmm. obviously we've talked about Alessandro. Mm-hmm. Um, recently um, I was on Instagram and Jared Leto was doing an Instagram live and Alessandro got on to the in- Instagram <laughs> live. Like besties now, it's so cool. And it, it's the, the, just the joy. Like yeah. he is just pure joy he is he is like really really sweet like yeah. you think of creative directors and designers being stoic uh, like, and like Carl Lagerfeld and they can be yes they can be for sure but he is just like this I don't know it just breath of fresh air and you can tell I mean he brought a breath of fresh air to Gucci so. yeah mm-hmm. and you know when I wear Gucci I don't feel um there's a little bit of humor. There's a little bit of don't totally. take yourself too seriously. Exactly. Fashion is fun. Yes. And he it displays that. And I always think of um, dressing up in like my my grandmother's clothes yep. or like my mom's clothes. And, 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 um, and the other thing is like, uh, and again, that element of men's tailoring, like he has a lot of women in suits and glasses mm-hmm. and a little bit of the nerd. I think I've always, I always feel, 
I, I'll always feel like an awkward nerd sometimes. Like I'm always in my head a little bit like you're never really fucking cool. And what I love about when I'm in Gucci is he almost like speaks to your inner nerd mm -hmm. and that 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 thing of like don't take yourself so seriously like totally. you're cool because you're you, you know you got that edge and just seeing the two together if you get a chance I think Jared Leto still has it on his reels they're just so cute because he's talking about Italy he's telling him to move to Italy <laughs> and he's he they're d talking to each other about their hair and Jared's hair's long again right god yeah that I guy love grows it I love it long like he's got to keep it long he does forever I want him to be a grandpa and old exactly with it yeah I think the the third one I would say you know it's funny I I would love to say Chanel but I've heard too many stories about Carl Lagerfeld from my sister. She used to work at this place called Bubby's in New York. And, um, you know, a lot of celebrities and stuff would come in. And she told me these stories about Carl Lagerfeld. And he just, although I think he's brilliant mm -hmm. and I love the aesthetic of Chanel, it's just not truly ingrained in me. But I do appreciate Chanel. Yeah. Isn't it, that unfortunate, though, when you, like, you love a brand or you love, like, an actress and and then you hear stories and it totally ruins it for you yes it's like oh why it's like when you see a pretty person and then they end up being so mean you're like why do you do this you're yeah. like you have it all just let's let's have i it, think the, the first whole package i think the i think that's why i have such a mental block with ariana grande is i heard about yes. her spitting on Same. donuts and i'm like i'm like you know so every time i see her now i just envision her like being that girl's like eh you know, she's got a great voice. She's a beautiful girl. But it's funny how it, it forever is just something that you're it's like, God, you want to shake it off. Exactly. I think the third one, um, it's so weird to think about. But I would, uh, you know, for me, Tom Ford. Mm -hmm. Tom Ford, um, he's so sexual. Exactly. I love it. Oh. Sexual, but like classy. Yes. Sexual. And, and again, he's got a hint of... Um, the the darkness and mm -hmm. a little bit of what I would say, um, you know, we all have a side to us where I think we we'd like to play. Um, we'd like to be a little bit mysterious, or we like. I was like going to say he's super. It's super mysterious to me. His, yeah. his everything. Tom Ford. I don't know. Just the the brand. I love um, both movies he directed. Um, the one with Amy Adams and Jake Gyllenhaal just rocked me to what the core. What was that called? Because I think I saw it. Um, I I'm going to forget it. now the name of it. Giovanna, will you Google that? Because that's a good one. Um, and then he did another one with um, Julianne Moore. And that oh, one was like, that was like a good man or something like that. The one though with Amy Adams, um, that kind of film noir mm -hmm. is another, another thing for me in terms of fashion. What I'm really into is mm -hmm. I... I um I love there's a movie um, with Gwyneth Paltrow and Ethan Hawke they they did uh, Great Expectations mm -hmm. every piece Don I think it was Donna Karen who actually outfitted her for the film but almost every single piece in that that she wears is timeless in the 90s mm -hmm. um, what's the name of the film is it Nocturnal, Nocturnal and oh, what's it Nocturnal, Nocturnal what Animals. Animals. I think oh, I have God. seen that one, but it's been a minute. I need to see. I need to watch it again. If you haven't seen it, put it on your list. It's disturbing, but it is so. And Amy Adams is like a vision. The other fashion film I have to say that just blows my mind is um, what's the one with Kira Knightley? She's in that green dress. Oh God. Pride and Prejudice. Not Pride and Prejudice. It's with her and James McAvoy. Will you Google that one? I'm like, my brain is turning off. She's, again, like that film. And it's in like, I think it's World War II, but she's got this amazing like flapper-esque dress mm, in there that's yes. so beautiful. Uh-huh. Okay, so I do want to know, mm -hmm. what are your, like, do you have any fashion accounts on Instagram or people that you follow that you love their style? Oh. I transitioned to that pretty abruptly. Yeah, but. no, I love that. Um, I have to say... Uh, I'm a huge, I, it's so funny how I've so evolved as a, like, as a 43 year old woman. Cause I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to wear most of the stuff that Kendall Jenner wears, but I'm five foot five. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to look like her. What's What was that movie? Kira Knightley, Knightley and James, James McAvoy. McAvoy. Um, but 
I now I like I look for my body type and I look for my age. Yeah. So I love I love Angelina. I think Angelina just Jolie. Like, yeah, Angelina Jolie. I love her. Just she kn- knocks it out of the park every time. Um, I have to say for sexy and older, Jennifer Lopez. Mm-hmm. I love her. Which one? Um, atonement. 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 That moved me. Okay, I haven't seen it. Check that out. And okay. whoo, there is a scene that is a make and love scene in a library in that green dress. And I was like, damn. I'm like, <laughs> that was a little too hot to handle. Who else do I love? Love GP. Love Gwyneth Paltrow. She's like, she's another one who, if you go back into the 90s, this chick, man, I mean, I was looking at Tom Ford she was wearing. I was looking mm. at... Um, Gucci, I was looking at um, uh, McQueen. She's had some major moments, yeah, some major she has. moments. She has. I think uh, for for younger women, or or I guess, I think Cara Delevingne mm-hmm. knocks it out of the park. She does. Kirsten, or what, not Kirsten, Kristen Stewart. Uh-huh. Fucking love her, man. She, she's, she's she's like ballsy. I she love, is. She's interesting. I just watched a, a Christmas movie actually with yeah, her in it. It was really good. I actually yes, really liked it. I did Super too. I hadn't seen anything from her for a minute, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Cara Delevingne is that. That's who yeah. you just said, right? Yeah. Those these girls that have. Um, I almost wonder uh, if they get. I mean, they're exposed to all this amazing fashion all the time, so I know that that has to influence them. Yeah. Also, they have access to it at all times. So I'm wondering if that kind of like gears how their style evolves also. Yeah. You know, if you're exposed to it, I mean, Mm -hmm. I can only imagine like I was, I really like this podcast. It's called Pants Mm -hmm. and it's with uh, Kate. I think it's Monig or Monig. She's, she's on, um, she was on the L word back in the nineties with Jennifer Beals, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, But she's got a very androgynous look to her. Yeah. And that's the other thing is I dig a good suit on a woman I do love menswear I I have a lot I like I'm the person that will wear my husband's clothes I mean my husband dresses awesome anyway but I love that whole look to wear you know and I like men play flirting with the idea of wearing women's clothes I think it's hot what do you think about Harry Styles wearing the dress on I think it was a cover of some magazine and people were uh, they were like, eh, I don't know. Like it was kind of controversial for yeah. some reason. I didn't see it as controversial. He was just like, I'm just trying to play with fashion. He is, yeah. he's very into fashion. I love Harry that Styles. he is. Yeah. I love that he is. I, and it's right with Jared Leto. Like for me, he's very much like yeah. Jared to me. It is. It's that it is. And of course they're, you know, they both are muses for Gucci. I right. Th- I think that, uh, uh, yeah. I right. wonder if that's why they're in, if that yeah. was influenced. Alessandro, you're yes. amazing. Like more people need to hang out with well, Alessandro. He's pretty feminine. He is. Alessandro. So I, I'm, and so is Jared. Jared is. And so is, is Harry. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I have to say David Bowie was the king yes. of androgyny. That's true. Even, even, I mean, even Mick Jagger. I mean, uh-huh. you don't do this with your right. lips. And, and friends. And, mm, I mean, come on. Mm. I mean, and, and fuck. Steven Tyler, Aerosmith. Yes. I mean, these. He's still I, got the feather in his hair. Hair, <laughs> hair bands, makeup. Like, to yes. me, I, I love it. I, and I also love to see now that, you know, it's not just white men that are doing it. Yeah. We're seeing all different cultures start to really open themselves up to like, I mean, I even think of Egyptian culture. Mm -hmm. Like I've always loved a good guy liner on a guy. I mean, I hate to say it. Robert Smith from The Cure um, was, was, I I mean, he wore freaking red lipstick. I mean, I I do like a good punk guy. Uh, Yes. Okay. This is a funny story, random, but there's the, I have a friend that lives in LA and he was in this band and he would wear red lipstick for every single show. He would, it was his thing. And he was like, I'm going to get famous for this red lipstick. And I'm like, you go boy. But that's like an example of guys like playing with the feminine side and it's cool. It's different. Not everyone gets it. They don't have to get it. No. Fashion's fun. You know, I, I think it's funny the the first time in my life to where I ever, I don't know, like I just, I, 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 it arrived, like I, I ordered the dress, mm-hmm. um, there's a dress that, um, I got from Tom Ford and, uh, I think Christina Aguilera actually wore it for, um, I think that like the Adams family, she did like a song for mm-hmm. the show, but I remember, or for the, the movie, um, and the dress is like a plunging neckline. 
And of course it's Tom Ford. So it's like way down here and, and then it stitches all the way up. Mm -hmm. But I remember um, like just putting it on for the first time and really knowing like it was my first really like beautiful dress. And it took me forever. I mean, I was, I, I got it two years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've had nice things, but when you finally are at a place where you can afford it, I think it's so important that you love it and that um, it gives you a feeling. Like right. for me, like I, when I look at fashion now, I want to feel, I want to feel like I'm in a fucking movie or I want to, or I want to feel like French or I want to feel like I want to light candles or I want to yeah. mood, you know? And I think mm -hmm. that for so long, I, I was I wanted to imitate someone and I wanted to be a person and now I want to be me and have a feeling inside. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how, cool. like, yeah. So that's how it's kind of changed for me. I, I think. love that. We just came full circle. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's good stuff. I could talk about this. We need to have more of this. Yes. I, I could literally like pick a person and probably talk about it or a film yeah. and just like go in and be like, how do you, how do you do it? I want to hear some, sometime I want to hear about like your favorite red carpet looks. Oh. I want to hear about your favorite uh, costume wardrobe from films, things like that. Like oh, I would love to get into a conversation We've, we've got that. it. We definitely have to do more of this. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, if I had in just like a pinky or a thimble of what you have now at your age, I mean, uh, it's just, I, I just can't wait to see where your style evolves as yeah. you, you know, get into your thirties and your forties because you are, I mean, you're so beautiful, but I look at my twenties, I'm like, God, what the fuck was I thinking? I just love that you're fearless with it. It's pretty cool. It's just really cool to watch you and you inspire me every day. I'm like, fuck yeah. Oh, what would Chelsea do? That's you know, so sweet. No, yeah. I, uh, my style evolves all the time. And as I am getting older, it does, it's changed. And I'm, uh, I, when I was younger, I mean, when I'm in my early twenties, you would not think that now, or you wouldn't think what you just said back then. I mean, I had pink hair, I had per, uh, blue hair. Yeah. I played around when I first moved to LA, I was like doing all the things, but f style and fashion has always been my thing. But it was whenever I discovered what was best for my body type, that's when my style just, I was like, okay, I get it now. Yeah. Cause I, I love, I love looking at trends and fashion and stuff, but not everything works for me. No, I get so it. So it's like picking, and, it, and if it if that specific look doesn't doesn't fit me, I can change it. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. Starting with like the blueprint. That's the word I was trying to think of. Starting with the blueprint of someone's outfit and then making it your own. Totally. I think you know before we close out, you know the one thing I do have to say is I I really look up to people who just go for it, and I think. Um, you know, there's a reason why I wear Dylan Lax. Mm -hmm. um, I have to give a shout out to that company because um, Drew and Robin, who pretty much are like, they're they're it. You mm -hmm. know, they they've created jewelry that, and they've created clothing now, which is so cool. Like yeah. the pants I wore for Christmas, yes. they do it where they give a nod to different cultures. They give a nod to powerful women or people mm -hmm. that have influenced them. Um, they are are they bring ideas to the table that um, are like, yeah, like like why not step into your power? Why not just why not wear the big fucking rings? Why yeah. not you know why not just go for it and be adorned and be unabashedly just fabulous mm -hmm. and what I love the other day when we were all talking at you know the Christmas party was the fact of like we've dressed up more in my house yes you know than we have outside <laughs> and I love that and I love it and thank you Dylan Lux for kind of like during COVID like I discovered him then and I'm like oh you did I did I did well, that's a really I mean, cool story I, I'd seen her stuff I just didn't know it was her and mm -hmm. I didn't know that I could actually wear something Beyonce wore and it feels yeah. really fucking badass that is to really be like cool. if Beyonce can wear it can I wear it and I'm like fuck yeah this year girl 
Drew, you made me believe I can wear what Beyonce wears. So mm-hmm. thank you, thank you. Um, uh, we have to do more of this. I yes. love this. I, I could talk forever. Too. Me too. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go for now. And as always, uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, we will see you on the flip side talking more amazing stuff and with more sure. of Team Fiend. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.